Okay, uh, this next topic is, is the term interval. And an interval, as you saw there at the beginning of the video, is how far apart two pitches are. Are they close together? Or are they wide? Um, an interval is the distance between two notes. Now, this is a concept. You're not going to delve into this too much with the young grades other than just helping them understand the difference between a step and a leap. Uh, or is it the same pitch? So we have uh, basically three types. We have repeated notes, we have steps, and we have leaps or skips. Um, so those, those are the things that I would teach to probably kindergarten, first grade, and maybe even second grade. And then in third grade and so on, we would start pushing forward into our expanded interval vocabulary here. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of these intervals and, and describe them and play them for you so you can hear what they sound like. Uh, the first interval that we teach that has a name uh, is what we call unison. And basically we're saying one sound, that's where that word comes from, and unison is actually the same pitch. So if I play two of the same notes on an instrument or sing two of the same notes, that's a unison. And as part of helping our students understand pitch and difference between pitch, they need to be able to tell that it's the same pitch. So you can play two notes that are the same and say, were those notes the same or were those notes different? And have them tell you, and most of them will, will understand that it is the same note. Um, now our intervals grow from being the same pitch. A second is two notes apart. So if I were on a piano, the, the, the notes would either be two white notes right together or a white note and a black note right together, or even two black notes right together. Um, those are all types of seconds, and we have two types of seconds, so that's why it just says second here. But this is what a second sounds like. And you can tell that they're different pitches, but they are close together. And I'm going to run over to the piano here quickly. I should have pushed the piano over closer. But I want you to hear what these sound like together. So seconds, our ears don't like them played together too often. We don't use a lot of seconds in music, especially music for children, because it does kind of hurt our ears. It's a dissonant sound. Um, and I actually played both the types of seconds. The first one uh, is two white notes apart, or right next to each other. And the second one was a white note and a black note right next to each other, which is even harsher on our ears, because those frequencies are really close. All right, next we have a third. So now we add a note in the middle um, from one white note to the third white note. That's why we call it a third. It sounds something like this. So that's what we would call an ascending third because I played the lower note and then I ascended up a third to the higher note from G to B. And again, there's two types of thirds. One's a little bit smaller and one's a little bit wider, so that's why it just says third here. Now, these last three I'm going to teach you, and these are obviously not all of the intervals, these are just some of them, but a perfect fourth, the P stands for perfect, um, that means it's a four notes apart. So, I'm going to play from a G to a C, this is a fourth apart. And you can hear that we're getting a much wider leap um, between those two sounds or frequencies. Um, perfect fourths sound pretty good together. If you play them on the piano, uh, they kind of sound like um, maybe Indian music or something like that. Uh, they have kind of a, an exotic sound to them. And so perfect fourths we use quite a bit in our music. The one that we use the most is the perfect fifth. And those of you that have learned about Bordoon already, Bordoon is all based on a perfect fifth. Um, so I'm going to play from G to a D. So there's my perfect fifth. And then the last one would be the octave. 
And those are eight notes apart, and again, they're the same letter name. An octave is always the same letter name, so from C to C or Do to Do, however you want to use that. Um, so here is on a recorder an octave from C to C. And that's quite a wide leap. All right, now I'm going to go over to the piano, I'm going to play all of these one after another so you can get an idea of what they sound like. Unison. Second. Third. Perfect fourth. Perfect fifth. And I'm going to throw in a couple extras here. Here's a sixth. A seventh. That same dissonance as the second because those frequencies are, are close together again. And the perfect eighth or octave. Now, as I teach students intervals, uh, obviously we can do exercises on recorders to help them to learn intervals. Uh, we can use our syllables do, re, do, there's a second. Do, Mi, Do, there's a third, and so on. Um, another way that I like to teach intervals is to try and find songs that help students hear those intervals. And so we'll take a, a, a folk song or something simple that they've heard before and attach it to one of these intervals. So one of my favorites is I've been working on the railroad, which starts with a perfect fourth. I've been working on, and there's a whole bunch of perfect force there at the beginning of that. I've been working on, and no matter where you start, if you sing that correctly, you have a perfect fourth um, in that song. And there's lots of different uh, way or songs you can attach to these different intervals. Some of them are harder to find than others. Um, for a second, Mary had a lit. That's that far, all of those notes are seconds. And then we have some unisons. Little lamb, go down a second. Lit, and sing a bunch of unisons. Little lamb, little lamb. Then we have a third at the end of that. Little lamb. So you can see that melodies are just made up of different intervals and, and patterns that create variety in the sounds. So there's an introduction to intervals um, and if you have to teach this you know lots of repetition of